All right, guys, it is Monday. It is in between rains right now. So I figured I better get out here and do my review of the get to the green race. Okay, so where do I start? So Saturday, March 17th was the 16th annual get to the green race. It consisted of a squirrel. <laughs> it consisted of a 15K, 10K, 5K, and a one mile walk run type event. So four events going on. It took place down in Five Points, which is just south of downtown Columbia, South Carolina. But before we go into the race and how all that went, I should talk about packet pickup. So I got an email Wednesday, it was Wednesday, saying packet pickup was available on Friday at Ath Athletes Arena. It's one of the uh, sponsors for the Gets to the Green. So I show up Friday, go pick up my packet and the wife's packet, and they're very friendly out there. This was not a strictly running. This is uh, an event put on by eggplant events. I'll get into that in a little bit. While we're out there, they check my bib number, hand me my shirt, nice thin green shirt. I do like it. I love thin shirts. If I'm not getting a tech shirt, this is what I like to run in. Unfortunately, the weather today is a little cooler than I wanted. And it's supposed to rain. So I doubled up on layers. I'll probably regret it at the end of the run. They handed me a cinch bag, put my stuff in. There were ads for the Palmetto Half Marathon coming up, as well as the Quarry Crusher that'll be happening uh, in mid-April. I've done the Quarry Crusher the last two years. I'm not doing it this year because I'm signed up for a uh, 10 miler that happens that day. What else was in that packet? Man, the scores are plentiful today. There was a voucher for a free workout at the uh, Athletes Arena. Information on how to join their gym. And I think I had a little bit of information on uh, what the parade and the St. Patrick's Day Festival would be like down at five points. When I go to pick up race packets, I always expect to see advertisements for other races. It's kind of like when you go to a zoo, you expect to see an elephant. You don't always go to see the elephant, but you know, there should be one there. It's definitely a mistake wearing two layers right now. I don't care how cool it is here in the woods. I can feel it. Yeah, I forgot to mention this in the packet pickup, but there was a map. I don't remember if it was in the packet pickup itself or at the gym, but they did show where we could park and that's a big plus especially if this is your first time going to the event which i'm assuming a lot of people it was their first time race day while the race started for the 10k and 15k at 7 30 since i signed up for the 5k i started at 8 along with the one mile crowd we showed up early because team rwb we needed to get a picture and Tracy from the Columbia Running Club was showing what this year's jersey looks like. It's also the 50th year of the Columbia Running Club. So if you're in the local area, go check them out, sign up. I think it's worth it. Well, we got out there early for those reasons. The majority of people I knew were taking off to do the 10K. There were a couple of people doing the 15K as well. Me, yeah, looking at you. They had somebody out there warming the crowd up and stretching them out before the race started. They did this for the 7.30 start and for the 8, th 8 o'clock start as well. For the race to happen, this is how it went. Like I said earlier, the 10K and the 15K took off 30 minutes prior to I did. But we all shared the first loop. And when I say loop, that's what there are. I only ran once for the 5K. 10K people ran twice, but their loop, their second loop was a little modified. It added like an extra street. And the 15K built on the 10K. They had to run three loops. They had to add in a little slither of another road in there to make that extra point one 
mile out there. I know it's supposed to rain in the next three days, but I thought some of the bird watchers and cyclists would be out here today. The birds are going crazy out here. I don't know if you can hear that. The one mile loop had a split. So they followed us for like the first half mile. And then while we were going straight, they turned left. The start and finish line were not in the same area. Our starting line was at the entrance to Maxi Gregg Park, which is on the west side of Five Points. And our finish line was one street away from Strictly Running. And that's on the east side of Five Points. So there might be like a half mile distance between the two. The first mile was uh, started off flat. Actually, the first half mile started relatively flat. And then around the half mile mark, started climbing a hill. And it was interesting going up that hill because there'll be people sprinting up it, some people power walking up that thing, others who will charge as fast as they could going halfway, and then they stop. And I'm like, can't stop? I think my lady Cyrus even said it, like, can't stop, won't stop. Don't do that on a hill. Well, she didn't add that last part. Once when you got past that hill though, there was only one more rise in elevation and it wasn't that significant or big at all. And pretty much for your last mile, it was a gradual downhill, but when you're out there running it, you don't notice it. You have to have someone like Strava show you that there's this slight decline as you keep going. The course was packed, but that's to be expected. We get to the green race, if it's not the most popular, populous race in Colombia, it's definitely one of. Because you watch my videos, you see I like to start in the back. It took me a while to get up to uh, some breathing room up there. And again, by no means am I fast. I haven't been that way for a better part of a decade. But I was definitely going slower my first mile than I was on my other two. But I like the crowd. That's the biggest thing for me, just running amongst all these other people out there. I could see people who are having fun, people encouraging each other on. There were a couple costumes out there too. I saw somebody dressed up as Will Ferrell from the Elf movie. There was uh, two people from behind. It looked like the Hulk with extra arms. But then when I got in front of him and his buddy, I could see that Hulk looking dude was a leprechaun carrying a leprechaun. It looked pretty funny. There was a person dressed as a uh, beer keg with a tap sticking out of it. I saw a banana suit out there. Definitely a fun run. And I knew I wasn't gonna place at all. But everybody who crosses the finish line, they get, they get a nice little uh, finisher's medal that doubles as a can opener or a bottle opener. And this year's looks even sturdier than last year's. I thought last year's metal was pretty cool this one looks like that if it ever falls off the off the ribbon it's going right in the drawer and it's opening up every bottle i have there were two water stations out there i'm trying to remember where the first one was i think it was at around mile and a quarter maybe mile and a half it was around hand middle school i'll get back on that in a second but the second water station was just past the second mile and by that point when you see that water station you can see the finish line it's way down there but you can see and you're like do I want to stop and get water now or drink some along the way or I just want to push through and finish this I think that second water station will help out or helped out the 10 and 15k runners more than did people like me but back to hand middle school so when I say when I bring that up there's several races we do in Columbia that use that route and there's the big eagle flying that away. Oh, it's not an eagle, it's an owl. And I know the GoPro ain't gonna get that. He's back there over my shoulder. So the neighborhood we ran through, like I said, it's uh, has hand middle school in the middle of it. I've done several races there, 
to include the red shoot run. I love that area running because it is relatively flat if you start there and finish there. And it's nice to see some of the hills. All right, this is where I'm supposed to turn, but we're gonna go straight a little bit. They haven't released the results online yet, but I'm pretty sure, like, I'm gonna estimate over 750 people ran with me on the 5K. And that's being conservative. Because at no point was I alone out there. I may have had a five foot radius around me at one point, but it wasn't like running here on the Timmerman Trail where you don't see anyone. There was always someone in my camera. Eggplant events, like I said, organized this. There are also the ones behind the Palmetto Half Marathon and the Quarry Crusher. I love the Quarry Crusher. I'm kind of sad I'm not doing it this year, but they're expanding because this year they're going to have a Quarry Crusher down in San Diego, California. Okay, out west. Whereas the last year or two, they stayed here in the south. They had one up in Virginia, obviously here in Columbia. They had one in Atlanta, but those guys I think they know what they're doing. Just seeing if there's a geocache back there. If you want to do something like this, definitely keep an eye out at their website, get to thegreen.com and check registration. Get on their email list. Cause I had to do a double take when my wife sent me our receipts so I could do packet pickup, which we didn't need the receipts. We paid $10 plus a service charge of like $3. So $13 way in advance to run a 5k and got a shirt a voucher for a workout and some other stuff and a medal oh. turn around here head back so that was definitely worth price of admission there but i say keep an eye on their website because once they start publishing for next year i think the price starts at 30 dollars oh you also get free admission into the St. Patrick's Day at Five Points Festival. That is a bonus right there. For all you college students who like to drink and party, and you know you're going back to University of South Carolina next year, look for their emails. Because I'm pretty sure that's how we got the $10 uh, price tag. And a wristband to get into the St. Patrick's Day Festival was $25. So. Do a little cost comparison there. We couldn't beat that price at all. We were in a bit of a time crunch, funny enough, because my wife works at the zoo and she was worried she'd be late for the zoo. She did the 5K, sushi crossed the finish line, handed her a banana and some water, and we took off. Plenty of time. Watch where you park. I bring that up because we parked near the finish line, but there were signs all around said, do not park here for the St. Patrick's Day Festival, which I wasn't parking for the festival. I was parking for the race. So we were out of there before nine. It was definitely a fun race. If you haven't looked, check out my highlights video for it. You'll see how crowded it gets out there, but it's not mean, it's not pushy. Everyone is out there to have a good time. And I think that's the best thing about it. So if you like what you see or before we do that. If you ran, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of it. If you like these videos, like, subscribe, comment as well. All right, until next time. Bye guys. Oh.